Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Cleanup Inside Out workshop. I hope you're all excited for day five. Today is going to be the last day of our workshop. So I hope you're all excited to know what I'm going to tell. So we will get into the session right away. I hope you understood the concepts. I was uh, uh, interacting with many of you in the comments. And uh, I, you all said that it was a very nice session. Some of you also very honestly admitted that it was a little too loaded, a little heavy. Um, I understand that. But then it is very, very important. You see, our whole existence in this world and the things that we do depend on the mindset that we cultivate. You keep your mind clear, clean, and uh, focused on something it is going to become extremely productive for you. you you'll actually become a winner. Um, and if you can listen, of course, you don't have to take everything that is told there, but then you have to listen and understand the main points that Earl Nightingale says in the Strangest Secrets uh, video. I, I have sent a link through the email last evening. Please go and check. All right. And if you have not taken the assessment, kindly do so. It is very, very important. Like I repeated yesterday, it is not for me to understand or for anyone to understand where you stand. It is for yourself to understand where you stand. Okay. So many kids have taken. I urge you also to go and take if you have not already done so. Okay. So let's get into the session. You see, um, Again, I keep coming back to the internal cleanliness part. Um, I mentioned about a lot of thought leaders uh, who have presented like Earl Nightingale, Napoleon Hill, Stephen Covey. There are so many uh, leaders, right? But then all of them reflect certain aspects of what our Acharyas have been speaking for thousands upon thousands of years. This is not something new. Everybody knew. Krishna talks about it in the Bhagavad Gita. Your mind is your tool to um, get bounded, get, get bound in this world or to get liberated. Okay, so it is very important to keep your uh, mind healthy, uh, your internal system healthy. When I say internal system, I'm not talking about the internal organs, the internal, inner internal system. Okay, so keep them healthy and then you will see that I'm very, very uh, sure, I'm very confident that you will be a winner. In whatever endeavors you take, you'll be able to focus well, you will be able to do things in a much, much more productive manner. All right? Okay. So we're going to go to the last part of uh, the cleanliness module, and that is going to be interpersonal cleanliness. Right? We had seen so far about the uh, three aspects, the previous three aspects of external, environmental, internal, and today we're going to take a look at interpersonal cleanliness. Um, interpersonal, what is it? Um, why we have to practice internal cleanliness? And um, how we are going to practice internal cleanliness? So these are the different things that we are going to take a look at. Are you ready? Are you ready? to understand how we how our dealings have to be. If you're ready, say ready in the comment box. Let's move on. Okay, one incident I'm going to explain to you. This was around 5,000 years ago when Kali Yuga had started already and Kali was in full force. You see, the sages are very compassionate people. They are called as para dukkha dukki. They become unhappy by seeing others unhappy. All right, so um, they were seeing that people in Kali Yuga, Kali Yuga has started after Parikshit Maharaj left, Kali spread his influence all over and people were suffering like anything because of uh, um, engaging in activities that were, they were not supposed to. So all the sages of the world, they gathered in a place called Naimisharanya. It is in Uttar Pradesh. I had gone there, I think, maybe three, four years back. Very beautiful place, small village. It's a village. It's not even a town. 
but an extremely significant place. It is said that Naimisharanya is the hub of the entire universe. It's a central pivotal point of the entire universe. I mean, a very powerful place. So all the sages, they gathered in Naimisharanya and they wanted to conduct a sacrifice, a fire sacrifice for a thousand years, something like that, or a hundred years. You know, so for many, many years, they wanted to conduct a sacrifice. And they wanted to know, finally, the Purnahuti, the offering of the sacrifice, um, they, whom should they offer it to? Uh, you see, the sages, they were conducting this sacrifice because they were concerned about the welfare of the people of this world. See, I told you they are para dukkha dukhi. They themselves become very unhappy when they see others unhappy. But unfortunately, in today's world, most people are para dukkha sukhi. No, they become happy by seeing others unhappy or para sukha dukhi. If someone else is happy, we become unhappy. Oh, how only he is so happy like that, especially on social media, isn't it? So there's a lot of pressure. But then, you know, they are para dukkha dukhi. So the sages, they got together. There were thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of sages. And they got together and they chose Brugumuni as the personality who will go and identify unto whom the final Purnahuti or the offering has to be done. They jotted down everyone's name and finally they came to three personalities. It was Lord Brahma, who is Brigumuni's father, Lord Shiva, who is Brigumuni's brother, because Lord Shiva is also Lord Brahma's son, okay, and Lord Vishnu. These are the three personalities who were um, selected. So Brigumuni went first to Brahmaloka and there he saw that Brahma in Brahmaloka there were so many sages sitting around Lord Brahma and then, uh, uh, sorry, in the court of Lord Brahma, but then Lord Brahma hadn't uh, come in yet. So at one point, particular point in time, all the sages, the great uh, rishis, everybody, they were seated there and then when Lord Brahma entered, everybody stood up. But Prigumuni did not stand up. Okay, this was a test. So he saw that Lord Brahma got a little angry. Okay, so he did not stand up and because Lord Brahma was a father of Brigumuni and his son did not respect, Lord Brahma became a little angry. And in his mind, he became angry. Okay, so then um, Brigumuni said, okay, uh, I see there is some little tinge of fault in Lord Brahma and then he went from there to Lord Shiva. There, as soon as Lord Shiva uh, uh, saw Brigumuni entering Kailash, Lord Shiva rushed to him and he said, oh my dear brother, give me a, a give, you know, let me embrace you. He went to embrace uh, Brigumuni and Brigumuni said, hey, 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 don't come and touch me. You look at yourself. You have smeared ashes all over the body. You have serpents all over your body. Please don't touch me. And Lord Shiva became so angry, okay? So angry that he took up his trident, his Trishula, and he was about to kill Brigumuni. But then Parvati Devi fell at the feet of Lord Shiva and she said, my dear Lord, he's your brother. Please don't do this. And then Lord Shiva controlled his anger. So then Brigamuni left from there as well. And then he went to a place called Shweta Dvipa. Okay, that is the residence place of Lord Vishnu. He went there and then what did he do? He entered and Lord Vishnu was in a conversation with Lakshmi Devi who was massaging his feet. So immediately Brigamuni went and Lord Vishnu actually did not notice that Brigamuni had entered. He went to Lord Vishnu and he kicked on the chest of Lord Vishnu. Can you imagine that? He kicked Lord Vishnu on the chest of, uh, um, on his chest. And Lord Vishnu was startled. And then he saw, oh, Prigumuni has come. So immediately he got up and he said, I'm very sorry, my dear sage. I did not notice that you entered my abode. Um, 
I, I'm sure your feet would have got hurt. My, my chest is like a stone. It's so hard. Your feet might have got hurt. So he made Brigamuni sit and he washed the feet of Brigamuni. So Brigamuni, he understood that Lord Vishnu, he has control over his anger. And then he came back and told the sages that uh, the final offering should be made to um, Lord Vishnu. That's why you see, even today, you may perform any homa. It could be um, Ganesha homa or Nasimha homa or any homa. Finally, the priest, the Purohit will offer the final Purnahuti saying, Sarvam Krishna Arpanamastu. Hmm? Namo Brahmanya Devaya, that particular verse they will chant. Namo Brahmanya Devaya, Go Brahmana Hitaya Cha, Jagat Hitaya, Krishnaya, Govindaya, Namo Nama. Okay? But anyway, that, that aside, the point that I'm trying to make here is I'm going to ask you some questions. All right. Now, um, I, I want you to answer this. There are two questions. Answer them together. How did Brigamuni test the Trinity of the universe? Okay. How did he test, test each one of them? The Trinity. That is Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and Lord Vishnu. How did he test each of them? Answer in the comment box. And... Did you recognize a pattern in the sages' actions? How did he test Lord Brahma? How did he test Lord Shiva? How did he test Lord Vishnu? Do you see a pattern in the manner in which the sage uh, tested the Trinity? Okay, go ahead and then let me know. Let me know um, if if you can think of something, if uh, you can uh, see, if you can, if you can find out some kind of pattern. Okay, many of you are saying that the volume is a little low, so I'll speak a little louder. Um, all right, go ahead, please, please mention. Okay, he made them angry. Sudhakar Nagarajan is saying he provoked them all. Yes, he did provoke them, but do you see? a manner in which he provoked each of them. Ambika Rao is saying he provoked them all. Rajiv Jha is saying angry. What else? Think, think, think. How did he, uh, how did he offend or uh, made Lord Brahma angry? He made actions, okay, through which everyone will get angry. Okay, Lavanya Venkat is saying that. He made them angry. Did um actually if you see for lord brahma he didn't stand up for lord shiva he didn't embrace for lord vishnu he kicked the chest okay shyamla pramod how to control without respecting them by testing the anger of at the anger okay he provoked them all um lord brahma with lord brahma he didn't get up okay so you see all right uh, i can understand what you're saying mm -hmm. so let me show you the pattern in which Brigamuni tested each of them. So from that particular story, we can develop or derive three levels of interpersonal dealings. The first one is mental. Can you put down in the comment box, which of the three Trinity personalities did Brigamuni offend mentally? Okay, first level is mental, right? Now, can you think of, okay, body, dealing and mind, Rupa. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so I think that is Samyak. So Samyak is saying body, dealing and mind. Fantastic. Okay, very close. I will tell you what the three are. But then can you tell me which particular personality um, Brigamuni offended mentally? Lord Brahma, exactly. Very good. Lord Brahma, he offended mentally. Yes. Right? Because he did not say anything. He did not do anything. He just offended Lord Brahma mentally by not respecting him. Very good. The second is verbal. Which personality did Brigamuni offend verbally? He spoke something. Okay? Which personality did uh, Brigamuni? Okay. Body, dealing, mind, Kanchana, Shiva. Um, very good, very good. 
Okay, which personality did Brigumuni offend verbally with his words? He offended that person, and then, and then, and then, you can immediately conclude how he offended Lord Vishnu, Lord Shiva verbally. Very good, Sandeep. Okay, I think that is Hare Krishna and uh, Nanda Gopal. Okay, Lord Shiva. Yes, yes, absolutely, Lord Shiva. Okay, now how did he? Ah, Lata Chandra, Brahma mental, Shiva verbal, Vishnu physical. Fantastic. Okay, so that's the answer that I was looking for. So you see, there are three levels of interpersonal dealings: mental, like how he dealt with Lord Brahma. Okay, verbal, how he dealt with Lord Shiva, and physical, kaboom, like that. No. we can deal with people in these three ways we can deal with people through our thoughts you know i think good about somebody i think bad about somebody okay or i speak good about someone in in front of them or behind them and i speak bad about uh, someone in front of them or behind them and then physically also i can do i can be very gentle with somebody and i can get extremely rude and angry with someone so these are the three levels of interpersonal dealings are you clear what are the three levels so remember this uh, brigumuni's example okay he dealt with each of these three personalities in three different ways all right okay so this is about what is interpersonal cleanliness interpersonal cleanliness is all about having clean dealings in our mind okay in our words with others and also in our actions physically also right okay now i am going to talk to you in terms of why why interpersonal cleanliness why do we need why do we need interpersonal cleanliness don't we all know how to deal with each other right if i am angry i am angry okay let's take a look this is a research done by um, J- dr john gottman okay so in this research he says he is a leading researcher in psychology and relationships he says the secret relationship killer okay is constant negative interaction there should be a mix of positive predominantly and maybe a little negative interaction of course this doesn't hold good uh, when when it comes to correcting someone uh, a teacher correcting a student or a parent correcting a child the child is doing a mistake the child cannot say that oh dad adi prabhu told that you know we should not have negative interactions why are you correcting me no it is not that way okay but then uh, normal reactions if say the child is asking something and the parent is uh, uh, yelling at the child or the parent is asking something uh, with the child asking the child to do something and the child yells at the parent so these are uh, negative interactions so the secret relationship killer is constant negative interactions between two people that's what dr john gottman says and the first of four communication patterns that cause a breakup there are four communication patterns that cause a breakup the first is criticism okay so there can be constructive criticism asking somebody to change their ways but then it cannot be critical in a manner in which it puts down the person all right so there can be constructive criticism there should not be negative criticism you can ask somebody especially if they are subordinate to you you can ask somebody why don't you do like this see uh, i am seeing that you are doing these things i don't think that is good you should you should change your mend your ways okay that is okay now um, dr john gottman is uh, predominantly focusing on the verbal part of our dealings okay because i think the internal part i have covered sufficiently you have heard a lot of things from me about how we can keep our internal system clean mm, how our thoughts are clean then our relationships and dealings also will become clean but then he is specifically focusing on the verbal part right so uh, this is about a kind of interaction especially in today's context uh, even this is considered as dealing we cannot spread uh, our our 
sufferings or our miseries to others okay but then you see how dealings are happening between people today all right watch this video okay so you see that it's very very uh, dangerous to touch rupee notes and then uh, without washing our hands going and eating food or doing something that we should not be doing you see this dealing cannot be prevented in the world we deal with currency notes but then the least we can do is be careful they are comparing the amount of bacteria on a currency note to the amount of bacteria that you found find in the sole of your shoes or that's why we don't wear shoes in india you see they know they knew all these things we don't wear our shoes outside shoes inside the house the soles of our shoes have a lot of bacteria because we are walking on the road streets which are full of dirt and filth right we cannot bring them into our homes and the amount of bacteria you find in the soles of the shoes the same number of bacteria you find in a note or the bacteria that you find on your toilet seat oh yuck right so this is really yucky so be careful and then in our dealings with people we have to be as clean as possible i'm not just talking about physical cleanliness i'm also talking about verbal and emotional or mental cleanliness as well okay so you see a lot of the diseases especially corona today had spread through uh, dealings with between people now you understand why they are talking about social distancing and then uh, prevent the uh, uh, spread of the virus by not dealing with each other too closely physically okay so that's what is being told right so there is if you see there is a large scale deterioration in physical interpersonal dealing so we saw that verbally uh, there is some uh, some level of uh, strain between dealings of two people and then physically also we see that there is a large uh, deterioration like say for instance even personal uh, people hit each other beat each other they abuse uh, others we know in innumerable cases where children are abused women are abused the weak are abused animals are abused the environment is abused right so in personal dealings there is a, a deterioration in interpersonal dealings physically family wise you know there is a deterioration uh, if you take socially there is so much social un unrest today right there is a deterioration and internationally today this particular period in the life of our planet we live in the most violent period of human history do you know that we live in the most violent period of human history the most number of wars the most number of crime okay the most number of murders all of these things the most number of strife unrest all of these agitations are happening today this period the most advanced time in our society is also the most strained time in our society unfortunately okay so there is a widespread deterioration in physical interpersonal dealings at all levels and that is the reason why we need interpersonal cleanliness everything is not good human society is at the verge of breaking apart okay so what is happening we are having unclean dealings with each other it could be mental it could be verbal it could be physical and what is uh, doing that it is damaging trust the moment we start having unclean dealings it damages trust okay now uh, say there are, there is a relationship between two people what do you think is the most important thing in a relationship between two people put down in the comment box what do you think is the most important thing in a relationship let me take a look okay so meaning of deterioration deterioration means re reduction reducing 
Okay, so Shyamla Brahmod is asking to avoid this. What can we do? I will tell you. <laughs> I'm going to tell that. That's why the session is there. So, um, oh, Sandeep is saying trust. Okay, what is the most important thing? Yes, it is trust. Ambika Rao, Premalata, Sudagar Nagarajan, everybody is saying trust. Fantastic. Okay, Jyoti Patil, Anand, Santanam, I think that's uh, phenomenal, phenomenal. Okay, phenomenal, yes, very good. So, the foundation of any relationship is trust. If there is no trust, then where is the question of relationship? So, when unclean dealings cause a damage of trust between two people, the next thing that happens is there will be poor relationships. Okay, one person goes one way, the other person goes the other way. There will be poor relationships and this causes social disorder. When there are poor relationships between two people or between two families or between two communities or between two nations, there will be social disorder at all of these levels, personal, familial, social, and international, okay, global. So at all of these levels, there will be social disorder. Think about this. Is this the reason why there is so much social disorder in the world today? All of these can be tra traced back to unclean dealings through poor relationships, through damaged trust. Think about this, okay? Right, so that is why we need interpersonal cleanliness. And today, now, I'm going to, so some of you asked the question, how to handle this? That's exactly what I'm going to tell you. How are we going to check this deterioration, this reduction, this lowering of standards in interpersonal cleanliness? Are you ready? If you're ready, type ready in the comment box. Okay, so let's move on. Wow, all right. Now, again, coming back to the Bhagavad Gita, you know what Krishna says. He talks about four things. Okay, he says, especially when you, when you speak, when you say something. Now, again, I'm here covering... Uh, the verbal cleanliness part because the mental cleanliness part I have already covered. So I'm going to, in terms of dealings, I'm taking the verbal part and the physical part. I'll come to the physical part, but right now I'm focusing on the verbal part. So don't think that I'm skipping something. The internal part, I, the mind part, I've already handled yesterday. So there are the four gates of speech. Krishna is talking about them as austerity of speech. He says, Van Mayam Tapa Uchyate. What are these four things that he talks about? He says, Anudvega Karam Vakyam. The Vakya, the words that you speak, should be Anudvega Karam. Udvega means to agitate. Anudvega means unagitating. It should not cause, you know, the. Uh, uh, it should not perturb somebody's heart. It should not cause pain to someone. It should not agitate the mind of a person. Okay. Anudvega karam vakyam. The second thing is, he says, first is unagitating. Second thing he says is satyam. The words we speak should be truthful. Okay. Satyam. The third thing he says is priyam. It should be spoken in a very nice way, gentle way, palatable way, sweet manner. Okay? Priyam, speak lovingly. Okay? That is the third way. Priyam. It is said in uh, some other places in the scriptures, Satyam Bruyat, Krishna is also telling you speak the truth. Satyam Bruyat, Priyam Bruyat. Bruyat means to speak. If you are speaking the truth, Speak it palatably, sweetly. Priyam bruyat. Ma bruyat. If you cannot speak like that, this verse is saying, don't speak. Satyam apriyam. If you are going to say the truth in an unpalatable manner, in a not a gentle manner, then don't say it. That's what it is saying. It doesn't matter. Don't say it. Okay? So satyam bruyat, priyam bruyat. Ma bruyat, satyam apriyam. 
Hmm? Today, people believe that uh, type yes or no, if what I'm saying is right. Today, people believe many times they say that I don't care what is there in my mind, I just tell. Okay, and people think this is great. It's great to do yes or no, type in the comment box. Okay, so if uh, uh, that's not the way civilized people do, whatever I think of, I just blurt out hmm? that animals do. Animals act in that manner. Animals act through impulse, through instinct. Okay, wherever they want, they will pass stool. Wherever they want, they will do whatever they want to. No, that is animal society. Human society means there should be restraint. It is for that reason that you find that there are laws in the human society. You see, a dog, there is a red signal. Okay, a dog crosses the road. It is not that the cop is going to run behind the dog and put a, a handcuff and take the dog to the jail. He's not going to do that. But if you cross the road, if you cross the road when the signal is red, then you'll be fined or you'll be arrested. Yes or no? Yes? So this is a very important thing to understand. Animal society generally function by the laws of nature. But human society also has man-made laws. There has to be restraint. Restraint means withdrawal. Okay? You are avoiding doing certain things. It is not that whatever you think you can just spit at the other person. It's almost like that. Right? That's, that's not a very good thing to do. So don't believe if somebody says, what's in your mind, you just tell out. That's not the way it should be done. Let me take a look at some of the comments that you are writing. How many of you agree with what I'm saying? How many of you are agreeing with what I'm saying? S right, agree. If you are agreeing to whatever I have told so far. So the three things that I have told you so far, it's, it should be unagitating, it should be uh, uh, truthful, and it should be also priyam. And the fourth point that Krishna is talking about is it should be hitam. It should also be for the benefit of someone else. Okay? It should be for the benefit of someone else. So, uh, if... Uh, so, it cannot be just that... Um, um, oh, okay. Now, uh, I'm just going to say whatever. If it is unagitating, if it is uh, truthful, and if it is uh, palatably spoken, then I can say whatever I want to. No, 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 that's not it. That's not just it. You also have to ensure that you're speaking for the other person's benefit. Hitam. Okay? So, uh, say for instance, um, somebody has a pimple on their nose. You go to school and you find that one of your friends has a pimple on his nose. And then you go and say, hey, my dear friend, you know what? You have a pimple on your nose. Very sweetly, you're telling the truth. Very sweetly, you're saying. And then uh, after that, you go and tell all your uh, friends in class, you know what? He has a pimple on his nose. Right? Like that. Very sweetly, you're telling. Uh, and then you go during the short break to all the other classes and then you are saying, oh, you know what, my friend, he has a pimple on his nose. Now, that may be unagitating, that may be truthful, that may be very, very nicely told, but then it's not for the benefit of the person. So, Krishna talks about the four gates of speech. Okay, He says the words that we speak should pass through these four gates and only then be spoken to the next person. We have to analyze all these things in our mind. It comes by practice. Uh, you, you may start thinking, oh my God, every single word that I'm going to speak, if I have to keep analyzing like this, how will I have a conversation with anybody? But it comes by practice. It comes by being conscious. Okay, what are those? The words should pass through. Okay, you see? The words are passing through these four gates. What is Lord Krishna's recommendation? Satyam, Priyam, Hitam, Anudvega Karam. Okay? The same thing, same thing will help you in many, many ways. So truthful, kind, beneficial and unagitating or non-agitating. 
Okay, so this is how you can practice interpersonal cleanliness. In the beginning, it may be a little difficult, but if you're conscious of this, if you're aware of this, then over a period of time, you'll get better at this. You know, you see, everything is difficult. For a child who's been crawling, getting up and walking is uh, difficult. But say, if you, you as a child, if you fell once, and then after that, oh my God, you know, this is very, very difficult. I'm not going to try this. Would you have ever walked in your life? If the child, after repeatedly falling, hadn't gotten up and walked forward, would the child have ever walked? Would you have walked? Right? So it is important for us to practice something. We forget this. We forget this principle that only we get better at something only if we keep doing the same thing again and again. It's a very important principle. We forget this. All right. So try this and it will work. So this is a verse uh, from the 17th chapter. Krishna is telling, austerity of speech consists in speaking words that are truthful, pleasing, beneficial, and not agitating to others, and also in regularly reciting Vedic literature. So the entire verse is like this. Anudvega karam vakyam satyam priyam priyahitam chayat. Swadhyaya byasanam cha eva vanmayam tapa uchyate. Swadhyaya means it should be based on your study. Okay? Right. Not whimsically saying something. Okay. So, um, thoughts and actions are there. Okay? This is a very important principle that I am going to talk to you about. So, there are thoughts and there are actions. I have already told you yesterday that our thoughts guide our actions. Okay, or determine our actions, direct our actions. On the other hand, the converse is also true. The opposite is also true. Here, Aristotle, a very, very famous Greek philosopher, he lived maybe around 2,500 years ago. Very big thinker. The, the uh, disciple of Socrates. Socrates also is a great philosopher, Greek philosopher. Okay. So, Aristotle says, to be virtuous, to be virtuous means to be good, to become free of vices, free of bad qualities, having a lot of good qualities. To be virtuous, a person must act as a virtuous person would act. So, you see, a person with a lot of good qualities, that person is very pleasing, very gentle, very calm, you see those qualities, and if you start imitating that person, imitating, I will I'll qualify that imitation a little later. If you start acting like that person, that means you act gently, you speak mildly, you are calm, even though your mind has not got tuned to it, what will happen over a period of time is that you will also become virtuous like that. So even though our thoughts are predominantly driving our actions. But when we imbibe good qualities, those actions, I am acting in a particular way, they will alter my thoughts. Isn't this amazing? Isn't this amazing how, how amazing our system is? Okay, it works one way and it works the other way also. Hmm? So, this principle, I have heard this from very, very exalted personalities, even spiritualists say this, fake it till you make it. Okay, they say like that. That means you, you're you not like that person, but then you act like that person. You act like a virtuous person. All right, so this is a very revolutionary thought. Okay, now this doesn't mean you fake a person with the intention of deceiving somebody uh, hoodwinking someone, cheating someone. No, that should not be the intention. The intention should be to grow oneself, develop, self-development should be the intention. If you have that intention, then over a period of time, when you act like a virtuous person, you will also become like, your thoughts will also get altered. Okay, so again, I'm going to back it up with a lot of uh, uh, studies. Study in psych psychological science says, um, if you're feeling very low, if you're feeling morose, if you're feeling down, then you smile artificially. 
you smile and your mind mood your mind's mood will be lifted this is a study that has been done in 2012 okay so um, another study says uh, if you want to feel confident but you're not feeling confident say you're going in for an exam or you're going for an interview you're feeling very terrified uh, but then you strike a powerful pose you no know, like that a very confident pose your confidence will improve because your mind is strict into thinking that hey i was feeling so low and suddenly you know the body is acting in a different manner so your mind will adjust to that particular action right or uh, listen to happy music to feel happy this is again in journal of positive psychology in 2012 there was a study it says listen to happy music to feel happy and another study in harvard business review says mimic good leaders to learn new skills mimic imitate it it is saying so mimic good leaders to learn new skills you see there was one very famous psychologist called alfred adler okay alfred adler he, he propounded a particular way of doing this okay it was called as acting as if acting as if you are already that person okay acting as if today that is known as role play have you heard of role play tell me yes or no have you heard of role play have you heard how many of you have heard role play <laughs> somebody is saying the baby is cute <laughs> right so the baby picture is cute right so how many of you have heard what is role play right h r p heard of role play h r p right h r p okay so role play is a particular technique that is used in training especially in uh, uh, live training so some of you are saying no sandeep is saying yes okay they heard amika rao is saying yes all right that's okay some of you are um, you have not heard all right so uh, this is something that you can do to become virtuous over a period of time it's not going to happen immediately i will give you an example that really struck me a lot okay this is in the life of shila prabhupad i told you he is my spiritual master uh, he is my parama guru and he is the guru of my guru okay so he um, when he he in 1966 he went to america okay he was uh, talking to very new people at that time they did not know anything about devotion or uh, the vedic culture they didn't know anything so uh, when uh, prabhupad would enter the hall there used to be some 30 40 50 people in the hall all youngsters okay and prabhupad would deliver a lecture to them and as soon as prabhupad would enter everybody would offer their respects by bowing down only one boy young man okay maybe in his 20s uh, early 20s he wouldn't bow down he he thought that i don't feel like bowing down so why should i bow down that's what that was his thought he also had accompanying him his elder brother so he went to his elder brother because he had this doubt every day every everybody is bowing down and he is not bowing down he is also feeling guilty at the same time he doesn't want to act against his conscience okay so then uh, he asks his elder brother uh, my dear brother you see i am not feeling like offering obeisances to swami ji uh, so i am not offering what should i do so his elder brother says why don't you go ask swami ji only so then this boy goes the young man he goes to uh, prabhupad and he says swami ji uh, you see this is like this i don't feel like offering obeisances to you uh, bowing down to you and i don't do it because i don't feel like this okay so then very surprisingly shri prabhupad said just do it okay like the nike tagline he said just do it the feeling will come later you see he says go ahead and do it offer obeisances gradually the feeling will come he understood that these young american boys and girls they were doing something which was very very 
very weird and new, very novel for their American uh, lifestyle and culture that they had. Something very, very different, right? They never had the habit of bowing down in front of anybody. But Prabhupada said, you do it and the feeling will come later. Fake it until you make it, okay? So again, I'm repeating this. Um, it's not with the idea of deceiving somebody that you have to fake it. Now watch this video and this is again a study that has been done on this particular subject. I am sure you are loving all the videos. Sometimes we need to get out of the way of ourselves so that we can be ourselves. And that's really what this is about. Other people have no problem with us being our best selves. We're the ones who are getting in the way of that happening. When I say fake it till you make it, I'm not talking about tricking other people. They have no reason to doubt you. I'm talking about tricking yourself into uh, actually being your fullest self. You approach each new situation with a little bit more confidence and each time you do that it becomes self-reinforcing you have that memory of doing it the last time which will help you the next time people begin to interact with you as if you are a confident person the more you behave that way the more your body and mind are sort of reinforcing this feeling of being powerful and being confident so eventually over time incrementally you get to this place where you no longer have to even really think about faking it you you, you just have become the confident person that you deserve to be so hey do you see that so this is uh, mentioned in many of the psychological journals also Psychology is a study of the human mind. Now, I'm going to demonstrate this principle to you using a principle in physics, all right? So observe this demonstration very carefully. Hmm? Now, this principle in physics is called as resonance. I hope you can see this. Okay, I think I have to go a little more behind. Okay, you see this. There is a rod here on top, all right? There are two strings that are tied down from the rod, okay? And there is a heavy object at the end of each of these strings at the end. And there is also one rubber band connecting these two strings, all right? So they are tied to the same rod and also there is a rubber band connecting these two strings. Now you see what I'm going to do is I'm only going to oscillate one of these heavy objects and you'll see that gradually I'm not touching the other object at all. You'll see that gradually the other object also begins to oscillate. See this? and starts vibrating at the same frequency as the first object. Okay, maybe I'll show it to you like this so that you can see it very clearly. I'll come a little closer. You see here, okay, I have to adjust, I think, right? I have not touched the other one. I am just holding this and I leave this and you see, <laughs> they are hitting each other. Okay, you can try this at home. Okay, so uh, this is called as resonance. It said that when one object vibrates at a particular frequency and then you place another object next to it, especially a tuning fork, you can go and watch on YouTube, especially a tuning fork. This starts vibrating over a period of time. This tuning fork, which is not vibrating, okay slowly begins to vibrate and at one point in time both of them vibrate at the same frequency this is called as a principle of resonance resonance works both ways your thoughts will guide your actions sometimes your actions can also push your thoughts in a particular direction okay so this is the principle of fake it till you make it Again, I'm re reiterating this, repeating this. The motive behind such an effort should be self-improvement, 
and not deception. It should not be to cheat anyone. It should not be to trick anybody into thinking that you are great or to gain some cheap uh, adoration, cheap, uh, uh, what to say, appreciation from people. No, it should be for self-improvement. Like, you know, I don't want to mention, but then you know this personality. He went and uh, met all the uh, soldiers, right? And uh, that was just a publicity stunt. He wanted to change people's perception about himself. But then there were the school kids around the same time when India was going through a crisis with a neighboring country. These kids tied Raki to the soldiers. This was from the heart. Okay, so it should be for self-improvement. This changes your beliefs by behaving differently. All of us think army people are kadus people, right? They are very harsh. No, you see, they allowed all of them stood in line and allowed these uh, uh, small little school girls to tie Raki for all of them. So in the minds of those girls, the perception about the soldiers have changed. So here the idea was they did something and because of that, their mindset changed. That is okay. This one is not okay. Doing for publicity, that's not okay. So keep your motive very, very clear when you are following the principle of fake it till you make it. And if you cannot, I would advise don't do it. Okay. So we are coming to the end. Now this is a project for your entire workshop so far. Now, this is called a clean tween journal for tween or teen. Okay, clean tween journal. It is an individual project. What you have to do is I'm going to show you the four levels of cleanliness and different practices under each of those levels. You have to pick two of those practices. Pick only two of those practices under each level and Track each practice daily and record in the journal. I'm going to send you this journal by email. Okay, I'll send you this journal by email. Uh, maybe I will put a link. I'll uh, share it on Google Drive and I'll put the link here on the top comment. I'll do that. But you see this? This is how the journal looks. Okay, it's inverted. It says clean tween journal. You can open it like this. And this is where you have to log your findings. Okay, this is where you'll have to log your findings and you open it like this, all the different practices under each of the levels are here. I will anyway show you the different uh, practices, okay? Try to get as close to the ideal score as quickly as possible. Okay, now there is also, there are also scores mentioned for each of these practices, okay? Uh, and the total so every day for 12 days next 12 days you follow this and uh, submit your report after the 12th day now why 12 days is because um, when you do so when something is very difficult our vedas say that you have to do it for one mandala one mandala is 48 days something is moderately difficult then you do it for ardha mandala or half of the mandala that is 24 days something which is not very difficult okay that you do for 12 days and it will become your habit okay so therefore this is not a very difficult thing i'm not going to ask you to do some really difficult thing it will be very easy okay i'm going to switch off myself and i'm going to show you the different levels so for external these are the different things that are there you can pick any one of them you either wake up before 6 a.m or perform exercise daily uh, take bath before 7 a.m., use soap before every meal, breakfast before 9 a.m., or sleep before 10 p.m. One of these six you pick, sorry, two of these six you pick and enter them in the journal. And then every day, uh, if you have practiced it, then give a score for that. Environmental waste only in the dustbin. Segregate waste into wet waste and dry waste. Switch off devices when not required. Water a plant or tree. Reduce using plastic. Plant a sapling. Don't go outside if you have to. Within, if you have a courtyard or a, I mean, if you have a garden, you can do there. Otherwise, don't do it. 
okay don't please don't step out and go somewhere because adi prabhu told so we have to follow don't do that okay and internal you can practice these things one two of these things you can either practice mantra meditation or you can just speak in an inspirational manner to another right pray to god read a scripture daily listen to soul music or remember god ah that thing is there yeah mat smritya chatmana shaucham i'll come to that okay remember god the second thing after first thing after waking up is you have to remember the lord right interpersonal i would suggest okay i would suggest all of you practice the first principle in interpersonal dealings interpersonal cleanliness i want you i am requesting you please do this okay let me come on let me show my face and request you please get into the practice of touching your parents feet every day okay so how many of you are going to practice this i want all of you to do this here i am not giving you a choice the other one in interpersonal the second one you can choose any of these you can greet a teacher you can give a gift to somebody you can offer praise to someone you help a friend call okay use golden words thank you please may i like that but this one is frozen touch your parents feet kids let me see how many of you are going to do this type me in the comment box if you are going to do it okay type me type me what are the golden words the golden words are um please may i thank you okay so touch your parents feet i i i, I think that's mohit okay ritu parna is saying i will do dharani pal fantastic rajiv cha lavanya is saying i will do sandeep i think hare krishna okay so no try no try i think that's vedant vedant is try, trying <laughs> you know saying i will try no try vedant please do it oh jyoti patel son or daughter i don't know i touched and came fantastic okay big round of applause for you right very nice very nice all right fantastic okay so i'm going to send you the link of the journal through the email okay and i will also put put in the comment the top comment here you can uh, um, get download the journal and i have a request kindly do not share the journal with anyone else please do not share with anyone else okay because this is a proprietary matter it is uh, it is intellectual property of our organization so kindly do not share it with anyone only use it for yourself you can take a print out or uh, you can create a form you know in paper by yourself hmm, based on what you see on the screen all right so let's do a quick recap and today i am going to announce the symphonic star if if you have done day one's assignment day one's assignment okay which was a greeting card and you have also done day 2's assignment which was germ war and you have sent me pics if you have done day 3's assignment okay which was uh, environmental cleanliness which was clean drive right and yesterday's if you have done the demonstration you can send me a video i received a quite quite a few videos of the uh, demonstration that i asked you to do okay that is put the put little uh, black paint in water and hold it under a tap okay if you have done that as well and if you have taken the assessment if i see i am not bothered about how much you scored in the assessment but if you have attempted the assessment and if you do this journal for the next 3 days only okay today is friday saturday sunday monday evening if you have done this i will announce the winners of the symphonic star that is i am going to send you the entire set of our books by post to you physical books and loads of ebooks to your email id to your parents email id i am going to do that so that is the announcement okay 
Now let's do a quick recap. So what have we done in the workshop so far? We have the first day, we saw the four levels of cleanliness, right? The second day and the third day, we saw external and environmental cleanliness. At each level, we saw what is it, why and how, okay? And yesterday, we saw the most important aspect of this workshop, internal cleanliness. Again, what, why and how. And then today, we have seen interpersonal cleanliness, what, why and how, all right? Okay. Now, uh, if there are questions, I'm going to answer questions. But before that, let's uh, recite this verse, a quarter verse, five times. Please repeat after me. Matsmritya chatmana shaucham. 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 Thank you. Now, mat smritya. Smritya means to remember. Mat means me. Okay. Atmanaha means self. Atmana here could mean the body, the mind, the intelligence, and the soul. Okay. All of these. Shaucham is cleaned. So somebody is telling, if you remember me, your entire existence will become cleansed. Who is that saying? The Supreme Lord. Okay, he is saying, God is saying that if you remember me, your whole existence, your body, mind and soul will get cleansed. You see this? This is why in the Ashtanga Hridaya, you remember, I told you that the first thing after you wake up, what you should do is remember the Lord. By this way, you, your whole existence, your mind, body, everything is cleansed. And the more you remember the Lord through the day, you are getting more and more cleansed. Okay? That is what the Lord is saying. So remember God always. Hmm? All right. Coming back to Q&A. Now, I see that it is already a little late and it is time to wind up. Okay. So I'm asking all of you, I'm asking all of you, um, the parents also, the parents and the kids, to take only questions, only questions. I can come online at 11 o'clock tomorrow, but not through Facebook, but through a live interaction through Zoom, where I can see you, see all of you, and you can also see me. Okay? So... I can uh, come if you want to. How many of you want that? If you want that, say, I do. I do in the comment box. If you want that interaction. Or today I will spend five minutes taking your questions and then we can wind up. Okay? So, um, you can say if you want an interaction tomorrow, then you put in the comment box, I do. And I will, okay, Shailaja, all, all, all right. So I see, how do we pluck the viruses in our brain in the beginning? Um, I answered that question in the comment yesterday. Um, basically, Krishna is telling you re remove the thoughts, right? So that's the demonstration that I showed. You cannot empty your mind of thoughts. You can only replace it with a fresh thought. So that is the way that you pluck out. So when a bad thought comes, replace it with a positive thought. Replace a negative thought with a positive thought. This negative thought will go away. That is the way that you can nip it at the bud. Shift your contemplation. Krishna in another place, he says, Rasavarjam rasopyasya param drishtva nivartate. By experiencing a higher taste, you can give up your lower taste. Okay, so that's the way it is. Okay, so some of you are saying, not all of you, there are more than 100, I think 60, and many of you are two people who are watching together, but I don't see many. So please let me know in the comment box 
please let me know okay i do when was rama married rama was married when uh, he was 16 years old okay right okay i do and i will <laughs> okay fine so now um, you you see one more thing for the for all the parents is that uh, i have put up a feedback form okay please please go and fill up that feedback form i am going to put that uh, link here i will share that link in the comment box kindly go and fill up that feedback form it will be very very useful i am sure you found this workshop useful and you would want others also to find it useful so therefore i want to know what things work what things didn't work it will take you 10 15 minutes to fill up or maybe 10 minutes not 15 minutes because it's all multiple choice so kindly go and it's a, it's just a feedback form kindly go and fill it up and it will go live at 3 3 in the afternoon today i will give you the link uh, i will give rama was married uh, when he was 16 okay i see the same uh, i have sent you the assessment link yesterday sudagar nagarajan is asking can you send me the assessment link i have sent all the links of the previous videos the assessment link and the uh, survey that i requested the parents to fill all of those i have sent you by email if you have not received the email kindly contact me personally on whatsapp and i will send you the link those of you who have not been receiving my smss or emails kindly contact me on whatsapp and i will send you all the links uh, through whatsapp okay so the uh, feedback form i'm going to write it here feedback form link is this okay kindly kindly please please go and fill up the feedback form it's a humble request and i pinned it on top so that uh, that particular comment will always be on the top you can uh, see take a look at that all right so i think i will take questions tomorrow so many of you are saying i can come up on a zoom call all you have to do is you either log in through your desktop then you don't need to install zoom but if you are going to take a look at your mobile then please install zoom it's free you don't have to pay anything install zoom so that the moment i send you the meeting id you can just click on the link and uh, you will be able to access the meeting it will be live um you know i will be able to see all of you if you switch on your video i can see all of you all right so that's fantastic um have a great year and great life ahead i wish you all the best in all your endeavors may the lord always be with you and guide you in all your endeavors thank you thank you so much for being part of this workshop kindly leave the feedback it will be a very big uh, advantages data for us and parents also fill the survey form that i have sent you by email and by sms thank you very much for being part of this i thoroughly enjoyed these five days even though i slept very little and i was very tired throughout the day but then it was very enjoyable i used to look forward and i hope it was the same with all of you thank you so much and uh, i'll see you soon online very very uh, in a very very effective manner um, maybe in a much more um, evolved way and we are correcting constantly all the all the things feedback that you are giving and we'll incorporate all of this thank you very much and uh, uh, may god bless you all thank you so um, take care of yourself kindly don't do anything that is uh, not recommended please stay safe during this time thank you